Hey YouTube, welcome back to UniX TCG, and today we are continuing our uh, nationals prep for One Piece, and we are going to this time look at the NL. Yellow and L from OPO5. Uh, just a brief refresher, if you guys are wondering why we're in OP5 instead of OPO4, it's because uh, there's no longer an invite requirement to go to nationals. So what you just need to do is make sure you're ready for the format that that will be in. And seeing as that OPO5 comes out in December and nationals is in January, that is the one fam. So past that, I do want to say that we are this close to 5,000 subscribers, like less than 50 people. Uh, you guys have been really coming through. So yeah, if this is the first time you've been on the channel or you know, you've been here, but you've been on the fence about subscribing, you know, just like the video, comment, let me know your thoughts, subscribe, and we will keep it moving. We cover a lot of card games here and you can check out all of my content across multiple platforms in the link tree in the description. So without further ado, let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. You guys blew me away with the last one on Purple Luffy and let's hop in to this. Alrighty, and uh, as I start this video, I just wanna say that I want to thank all of you guys for the support you guys showed for the Purple Luffy video. It exceeded expectations on views, on likes, on comments, and uh, I am very happy for that, and I'm trying to just make sure I keep that energy up so that you guys can find content that you really, really like on this channel. Um, and then, yeah, so let's actually move directly into the leader. We've got Enel, Sky Island. He's a, a 5K leader and he only starts with four life, but there's a reason for this. Um, your opponent's turn, once per turn, when your number of life becomes zero, add one card from the top of your deck to the top of your life cards, then trash one card from your hand. So the thing about this is this is pretty much the entire deck. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have played those RPGs like One Piece or Mega Man Battle Network, but like the Undershirt or uh, One Chance, One More Chance, or you know, that that's the thing that keeps you at one HP when you would normally be, you know, KO'd. Now in this, this is pretty much like that. Every time you drop down to one life, or zero life, you're going to be able to bounce back to one life by discarding a card from your hand, and that's actually really cool. So that means any time that you would be at one life, you actually don't take two hits to kill, you take three hits to kill. And sometimes that overextension is all you need, or the extension of your life is all you need to stay in the game another turn. And the thing about One Piece is, One Piece has been swinging for a lot of times where, you know, a singular extra turn is all your opponent really needed to win in a lot of cases. Now, granted, we're moving to a format that has a lot of blockers and um, a lot of like back and forth it's kind of slowing down in OPO5 like uh, lots of the decks do kind of pivot to being more mid-range with a lot of big bodies and so that's kind of how that is especially with purple Luffy being one of the you know de facto big dogs of the format however NL is going to be able to play a lot of good yellow cards and it's going to be able to maintain a, a healthy life pool and be able to just go off in the sense that um, it's just much harder for your opponent to kill. You already have the triggers of yellow. You already have the ability to gain life on cards like Big Mom and another card we're gonna talk about very much so uh, in a moment. So this is pretty much what this leader is. It is a vehicle to longevity. And in a yellow deck, you start putting big bodies on the board and eventually you'll crumple your opponent through sheer force alone. So yeah, let's talk about why this deck is so annoying and why it can go the distance. Um, the first card that I wanted to speak on is a nine cost Yamato that just came out in OPO4. Nine cost Yamato says, on play, KO to one of your opponent's characters with a cost that is equal to or less than the total life of you and your opponent. Then if you have one life or less, you may add up to one card from the top of your deck to your life area. This card is very crucial in how this deck works. So in OPO4, it was very hard to utilize this because um, you're not really getting down that low on life and when you could be playing Yabato, you could be playing Big Mom 10. So in Katakuri, it didn't really work that well. Um, in the Yama uh, Yamato starter deck, you could play it because she does wanna be around or he, she, they. Yamato wants to be low life. And so because of this, you do have the opportunity to play the Yamato boss card. However, with NL, it becomes the one-two punch follow-up. You have your board, you press your opponent, you may have a block or two, your opponent gets you down to one life. Then they get you down to two life. You just drew two cards. Then you use the effect of your leader, you go back up to one life and you drop a card from your hand. The following turn, you can tap nine 
play Yamato, she reads you at less than one, one or less life, so you go up to two life, and then you're gonna be able to blow up something small, maybe a chump block, or maybe a searcher, maybe a body that could be donned up and swung on you next turn. The point is, Yamato becomes the best follow-up play to you using your leader's effect, because you are going to be able to for surely go from zero life to one life to two life and then have a big body on board. Not to mention you get a little bit of destruction out of the way and now you have one Dawn left over to be playing another card later in the deck. So with the dynamic duo that is Enel's leader effect plus the, um, plus the Yamato nine drop boosting you back from the jaws of death up, let's actually talk about some of the new cards that are gonna come with this leader. So first we have Konus. Um, it's a 2k counter. That's the main thing you're using it for. It says on play, you may place one of your stages at the bottom of your deck, draw one card and trash one card from your hand. Um, we don't really use stages in these builds. So this is just really to be a searchable 2k. That's pretty much it. Uh, the following card is, <laughs> I love Shura. So it's just like so funny. Shura. Um, it is a 1k counter to cost and that is kind of wild but on play look at uh, uh, look at five cards from the top of your deck reveal up to one sky island type card other than Shura and add it to your hand and place the rest of the bottom in any order the reason why it's a two drop is because it's also a trigger so uh they just don't want you like playing it for one and being able to trigger it so yeah that's pretty much this one pretty easy but he doesn't have to trash a card in your hand like Paris Barrow because he's not really a swinger so really you trigger this you're just playing it out um, the next one is Holly. Now Holly is a three cost 5k, so basic vanilla stats. However, there is a reason why you play this card that is not just, you know, a vanilla, other than the fact that it's an adorable doggo. So this is the next card. Ohm, um, uh, four drop 5k, and uh, that seems kind of weird. He's a four drop 5k, but he has a pretty good effect. If you have two or less life cards, and this leader gains, or this character gains plus 1k power, making him in a 6k, meaning he only needs to be boosted once to hit that magical number, which is great. On play, look at five cards from top of your deck, then reveal up to one holly and add it to your hand. Then place the rest of the bottom of your deck in the order and play up to one holly from your hand. So for four, you could be potentially playing two bodies and if you have holly in your hand already you just pick up your top five see if you can break even by getting another holly and then you just play holly which would minus you overall two things but it's momentum it's really forward momentum you're just being able to play out those cards so that's why this is here next card you have got satori and uh it is a five cost 5k you will never play this card unless you were very desperate but it is a two counter 2k counter and uh you may trash one card from your hand and play this card if it's triggered so it's just a free body um and then uh mostly free body and then it's a 2k counter so that's pretty cool next we're gonna move over to gadatsu and this guy just says on play ko up to one of your opponent's characters the cost equal to or less than number of cards in your opponent's life um now the issue is it's a five cost so the most you could really blow up is a five drop sometimes six and if yellow high rolls but if yellow is at six life by the time you can play this card um yeah that but at the same time um by the time you do get to play this card your opponent is probably at three life or so so it's good for clearing weenies it's not really great for anything else but it has counter it's five for 6k and it can clear a blocker and that's all it really needs to do um, next, you have Enel, and uh, this is a really, really interesting card. Right now, I think it's gonna get better the longer the game goes on. But right now, it's only teched at one and two on most Enel lists. So it has Rush, it's a seven for 7K. And that's like a stats. But instead of having just Rush and then minusing 3K, minusing 3K, this has Rush and then once per turn, if this character would leave the field, you may trash one card from uh, your life instead, and if there is a Monkey D. Luffy character, this effect is negated. This is the main reason why you can't really thrive on this effect, because um, if you're playing red, easily, there's Luffy cards. Um, well, I mean, there's a 5 drop Luffy that's just very, very, very strong. Um, if you are playing green, like right now, lots of green has the film package, so yes, there's another Luffy that can make this really rough. Um, if you're playing blue, not really terribly. If you're playing purple, eh, you have uh, more kids and laws than you do Luffy's right then and there. Um, so, and if you're playing the mirror match, yeah. So basically, this effect is really live, except except against red and green, which is still enough because purple and yellow are going to be some of the big contenders next format. So over. Overall, this is a really good card. Uh, tapping seven to have a 7k rush is fine. 
it swings to the magic number it comes down and immediately swings and it has some sort of protection so love that for it uh and then the last of the cards here uh, that are new at least are uh, this is L Thor and this is a monstrous card for yellow. So it's a one cost counter. Up to one of your leader character cards gains 2k power during this battle. Then if your opponent has two or less life cards, this card gains an additional 2k power during this battle. So for one, it's a 4k, it's conditional, but this is the rad beam of yellow. And then trigger K up to one of your opponent's characters at the cost equal to or less than the number of your opponent's life cards. I don't really know why you'd ever trigger this unless it was crucial for a game. Otherwise, yeah, you just take this in your hand. This is beautiful. This is the card, like the holy trinity of this deck is an Hell's Leader ability, Yamato, and uh, El Thor. You literally can just, you know, be at one life, take, go down to zero, use uh, an Hell's ability, go up to one life, and then you, if you can stop the rest of the damage from coming through, you then follow up with a Yamato going up to two life, maybe blowing up something small, and then El Thor in hand, you just know that you're in for a good turn. You have to be hit three times the following turn to die, um, and you're just building a board. So this is very, very nice. And even if they hit you two out of those three times, you were then gaining a life, and if you have another Yamato, okay, you're back where we started the previous turn. That's the thing about it. It is incredibly hard to kill off this deck when it draws optimally, and you have to have multiple turns of game-winning strikes lined up to actually get this. Um, now granted, sometimes you just have the feel to push through, but yeah, and that was a little annoying. Now going over to cards that we actually get to use in yellow as is, you have uh, Capone Gang Beje, just because it is one of the best triggers in yellow uh, in general, just being able to point at something and say stop, it's your Red Hawk, it's your Punk Gibson, That's this is what this character does. Um, then you have Sanji, a big 5k blocker coming out from your life is just very good as well. Uh, you always want to be able to see that. Uh, you have Shirohoshi, Shirohoshi is just goaded, goaded filter and when you play it from your, uh, from your life it's a plus one and you filter three cards, excellent. Then you have Charlotte Linlin 7. Uh, of course, you can't play 10 because you're not a big mom pirate, but this card is great. Since your deck has a um, since your deck has a good 9 drop and uh, good 7 drops in the form of Enel Rusher as well as Charlotte Linlin, you are really in a position where uh, yeah, going first is not going to be a detriment to you. You're going to be able to play your cards on curve and be happy for it. Uh, Katakuri has to be a turn late, but this deck can easily go turn 1 or go first or second and be fine for the most part. Part. but going first I think is a good curve for it on top of going first um, when you even hit seven this is just a really good card because you can either just remove your opponent's life of course or they give you a life either way you're making yourself harder to kill or you're bringing them closer to death and in this deck in a deck that's already very annoying to kill multiple times as long as you don't die in a turn you will have like an extra couple of life it's just gross so yeah this fits in with the synergy and then you have Katakuri. You do max out on this card in almost every list I see, and Katakuri is just good. He is going to come down, he's gonna provide a big body, he's gonna bounce stuff. You can bounce around triggers as always, but you can also bounce things in your opponent's field that are more so hazardous than they need to be. Um, now granted, this isn't like Katakuri where you can bounce things, pause, and then big mom, and just kill them all for the life. However, you do get to remove a lot of pesky things on the board, such as all the blockers that Purple Luffy puts down, um, your opponent's opposing NL, if uh, you can't get rid of it, you can't swing over it. There's a lot of things that Katakuri does, and he's more important in this format than ever. Before, you play him at two, sometimes three. Now, he's just an auto four of pretty much in this deck for what he provides in a body and removal. Last but not least, Thunderbolt is a card that still sees its copies. Um, because you are gonna bounce back with life, you do want to use Thunderbolt uh, sometimes offensively just to get your life total down. Um, but of course, it's just best when it's a trigger. But in this deck, yeah, like there's nothing wrong with using Thunderbolt if you know that next turn you're about to wall your opponent off when they attack, use your leader effect, and follow with a Yamato. So there is what it is. So essentially. The whole point about this is, like I said, Anel still has normal yellow shenanigans. You still have to check face every time you uh, swing into life and see if they get a trigger. But on top of that, they just kind of grind you out because it's hard to kill them. And especially in a slower format where, you know, Purple Luffy is looking to have a little bit of a longer game, Anel has time to set up C triggers, replenish life, 
not die, not die, not die before, you know, it's like, oh crap, I'm running out of cards in hand and they have more in the attack. So that is what it is. But I hope you guys like the video. Like I said, um, I want to see if this video can get over 100 likes like the other one did. We're going to keep on going on our Nationals prep for set 5 meta. And then eventually we're going to roll, uh, roll back around to some sim work. So you guys can see how the decks run, see some lists. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to more of this content. Let me know in the comments. Like the video. Uh, like I said, check out that link tree. And I will see you guys in the next one piece video or any other video if you like battle spirits dragon ball you can go over my other channels i'm doing a beast go on unboxing for a figure on my dragon ball channel i'm streaming spider-man 2 on twitch there's still a lot going on in universe x so yeah later